Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. Today's episode is actually part two of building a small city block. So let's head over to the workbench and get started on it. For those of you that missed the last episode, I'll give you a quick recap. Uh, we are making this structure right here and this is just a simple cardboard uh, mock-up that I made. Um, in the last episode, we made these two structures right here. For the blue structure, I used a kit from Fosscale Models, and it was from their Kit of the Month Club. It was the January 2019 kit. Then, for the structure on the end, I used pre-cut wall suck sections that you can buy from Fosscale Models. And for the storefront, we used a kit from Fosscale Models to build storefronts. And I don't believe they sell these anymore on their website, but they used to. Uh, I think you got two in a kit. You could build two of these. So that was in the last episode. And this episode, we're gonna build a diner that goes right next to this. So let me move this out of the way. For this diner, we're gonna be using the newest kit of the month from Fosscale, and we're gonna be doing some kit bashing to it. Now, I just wanna say that the kit of the month club is incredible. It is an incredible investment. So I recommend that you do whatever you have to to join this club. If you have to get rid of some magazine subscriptions for a while, um, if you have to stop buying coffee from Starbucks for a while, whatever you have to do to come up with the money to join this club, it is worth every penny. Okay, so for the diner, like I said, we're going to be using this. Um, what I've done is I've made a copy of the parts. So here's the original one of the pieces from the kit. And I scanned this into my computer and made a copy of the front. I then made another copy but cut one end made a copy of this cut one end flipped it this was all done in the computer basically came up with another wall section now this wall section here will be curved right here so now with a photo mount spray, I'll spray this and probably attach it to a manila envelope or folder and then cut out these pieces. I will share with all of you a secret. <laughs> when I start a craftsman kit, any cra wood craftsman kit, I make a photocopy of all of the pieces, even the plastic pieces. Lay all the parts onto my copier and run off a copy of it. That way, later on, if I want to, I can scratch build it again. I can scratch build it as many times as I want. For example, um, Here's a Foss scale kit. This kit could be uh, a small factory, a small business, uh, a small warehouse. And just by simply changing the color of it and changing the signs, you can completely change the look of it. So uh, when I do get ready to build this, um, I'll lay all the parts onto my copier. Like I said, even the plastic ones that I know 
what they look like so that I could order them possibly from Titchy Train Group. Uh, but I'll probably end up building this multiple times and having it in different areas on my layout. And you could also build half of the structure and build half of, say, another structure and combine the two. Uh, so again, a good trick is to photocopy the parts so that later on you can scratch build them. I know on the Franklin and South Manchester, George has multiple structures um, that are just duplicates of one structure. And he's done it maybe three times on the layout and just painted it different colors and added different signs to it. So uh, it's hard to tell that it's the same building. So I cut out the section from my copy that I wanted to use. Then I used spray adhesive and attached it to my manila envelope or manila folder. Uh, any type of cardboard, uh, just the thinner the better. Easier to cut through with a knife. Then I used, I put in a brand new blade and started cutting out my windows. So again, the thinner the cardboard, the better. It's gonna be easier to cut through. Then use a brand new blade so that you don't have to apply much pressure at all to it. Then, very important, start from the corners And pull back and as you can see I'm only going maybe halfway then we'll turn it around and start from this corner always start from the corner I'll explain why I'm having you do the second. So as you can see, again, I'm starting, always starting in the corner and pulling back. Now the reason I start in the corners is if you go the other direction, you risk cutting through those thin pieces. So again, too, it just takes practice. You may want to make multiple photocopies and spray them all at once onto one sheet so that you have multiple copies ready in case you mess one up. But if you do, you can always glue in a little strip if you wanted to. For the front wall, there is trim uh, this is great because you can paint this a separate color a different color than your walls and then that gets put on there just like that now the hard part is I have to cut that trim out for the new section So it's going to take me a while, but I have to cut out all the white area. Okay, so it took a while, but <laughs> it's cut out. So I took my knife and scored all of my lines. Basically just cut through the layer of paper, but tried not to cut into the layer of the manila folder. So now I'm going to start painting the square tiles and I'm going to use I'm going to start with sea glass it may be too light I may have to do a light wash of a another blue over the top of it I'm not going heavy I'm going very thin 
I don't want it to warp and I don't want to fill in all the little cracks. If it's not dark enough, we can always go over it. But I'll just, I'm just going to do thin layers until I get the uh, color that I want. But again, I don't want to fill in all the detail. Okay, now I'm going to go in with some sea breeze. So this is what we started with, sea glass. And now we're using sea breeze. And I've got my brush pretty wet. And really, we're just kind of going over the, the cracks. We're not doing it solid, just going over all the lines. So I just went back in with sea glass and just put a little bit right in the center of the tiles, each tile, just to kind of give it a highlight. Okay, I think these are, are done. I'll see what it looks like after it completely dries. Um, I'm going to do the bottom. I'm going to do red and white. And instead of white, I'm actually going to do sand gray. And I'm going to use French wine for the red. So I just set the trim on there just to see what it would look like. And uh, I'm not real happy with the color of the tile. So I'm going to do a thin wash of desert turquoise over it. I like this color. It has a little bit of green to it and my water is a little dirty and it's going in the cracks so it's giving it a nice weathered patina look. Okay now I'm going to take a sort of a orange terracotta color and go along the bottom a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to use burnt umber. And I've got a sponge. And you want to keep dabbing it until you get fine, fine little dots. I'm just going to go along the bottom mostly. Uh, I don't want it to look too run down, too rusty. I want people to come in the diner and eat. Okay, so the walls have dried for a while, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in those cracks. I'm going to use a number two pencil, and what I do is I carve it with my my X-Acto knife, and then lightly shave that to get the finest little point that I can. I don't know if you're able to see that. But you want to get it as sharp as possible. And then very lightly go in the cracks of the tile. I'm hardly applying any pressure at all. The graphite is leaving a little bit of silver on the edge of that tile. You want to go really slow so that you don't actually draw on the face of the tile. Just drag it in the cracks. I'll hold it up so you can see the difference. So I sprayed a gray primer on the uh, two trim pieces. Now I'm going to take a silver sharpie and I'm just going to simply go over all of the trim. We can sponge on a little bit of rust color too if we want to. Now that my trim is glued on, I'm taking my silver sharpie just going along the inside of the window frames so that it's all silver you don't see the edge of the cardboard even in the uh, door frame we'll even go along the bottom the 
the edge. Okay, our two fronts are done. All right, now we better start following the instructions and figuring out the rest of it. Just to give you a rough idea, that's what we're gonna be looking like. Okay, I've got the windows put in, uh, the little curtains put in. I also took a sponge with silver paint and went all along the bottom on the red and the white. I cut two pieces and I made them about a quarter of an inch bigger on the side in the front. There will be a sign that wraps around the entire front and that side. So I have to do that next. Okay, for the next section on the roof, I glued two pieces of cardboard together and cut the shape that I wanted. So we'll glue all these together and then we'll put this, we'll glue this in the center and then that gets put onto the roof. Okay, here's where we're at so far. So I don't have the top glued on it yet. And there's the back so far. I will cut a long rectangle piece to glue on there and I'll paint that black and then I've built this little shed this little add-on maybe this is part of the kitchen and that goes on the back side just like that and we have a door and I'll put a vent in there a little smokestack it's a slight a-frame roof So I worked through the night on this and let me give you an update of where we're at so far. I'm not sure what to do with the back. Uh, I know I'll cover a lot of this area with signs. Just haven't decided yet on that. Um, probably add some signs back here. Um, some smokestacks, maybe some more vents. Uh, still have a window to put in I'll paint that window red and put some acetate in it and put that in place uh, for this top piece what I did was I cut a smaller piece I traced the original um, outline of the building then cut a piece then cut three sh strips of uh, this is from a manila folder and I cut three of them cut three strips glued them together so that it was a little bit thicker and then after I glued that onto the rooftop I then glued that around the edge then you'll see there's a thin red stripe that goes across there that is just one piece of the uh, manila folder and I cut a thin strip of it painted that red and glued that on so really the whole thing is a lot of mat board and the manila folders um, then for the sign, I got on my computer and created this sign. I 
I then cut that out and glued that to a piece of task board. But you could also um, do mat board. It's a little thinner. I like the task board because it's uh, pretty thick. It's probably almost an eighth of an inch thick. And then did some weathering. Then took copper wire. And made it look like there's neon tube lighting around it. And then the back is just uh, simply strip wood. The copper wire, before I put it on there, I used super glue, but I spray painted it with a yellow. And I was going to paint it white, but there was already a white stripe on there and white edge. And I thought that if I sprayed it yellow, it would stand out more. And, and I think that it does. So I'm happy with the uh, light yellow that I painted it. Next, I have to create a foundation and a sidewalk to go in front of this. This will also be going next to it. So I'll uh, take some paper and create a pattern for my sidewalk and the foundation for underneath these. Now behind this, there will be an alleyway and that'll just be dirt and gravel. So uh, that won't get concrete. Okay, so here is our pattern, and I just want to place everything on there to make sure that it's all correct before I cut the final piece out of the mat board. Okay, it looks good. Everything lines up. Now I'll just trace that pattern onto mat board and cut it out. Okay, so the mat board is cut. Everything looks good. To add just a little bit more interest, I'm going to put another layer underneath the diner. But it's just going to be under the diner. And then I'm going to put a curved step in the front, up to the front door. Okay, I don't know if you can see that well. But I put a curved piece of concrete right in the front. Now we'll cut this out of mat board and put it on top of our original piece. Okay, let's see how this all fits together. Okay, so that's what it will look like. So now I'll get my curb line drawn and cut in and then all my lines that go this way drawn and cut in. And uh, we'll paint it and weather it to look like concrete. We'll put weeds in all the cracks. Then we can fully detail it. Okay, so I've drawn all of the, the lines and the curb. Now I just have to transfer that onto the mat board. And then we'll score it with a knife. And then we'll paint and weather it. Okay, so I've got everything painted. I used um, the chalk paint. It's called Cocoon. I think that is a great concrete color. I mixed a little bit of slight gray with it. If you want to make it even a lighter gray, you could do a pale gray. I then took my pastels and brushed on some dirt. I placed the structure on there to see where the, the doors are, to see where the heavy traffic. And then I took a very sharp number two pencil and drew cracks 
in the cement. So I think it's looking pretty good. The next thing I'll do is add some weeds in the cracks. I may glue these on first and then put the weeds in. Yeah, so I think I'll get these glued in place and then we'll get some weeds in the cracks and start our details. You probably won't be able to see this. I'll hold it up to the camera, but I'm gluing on some weeds in the cracks. I'll try to show you. I might have to take the camera off. I'll get some more newspapers glued on there. You can see some more weeds along the edge of the building. So I'll show you quick uh, some very, very tiny weeds. I just dip it in the glue place it where I want it and then hold it there with my exacto knife and kind of squish it down in in the crack so they're very 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 tiny some might be like just a little speck of green but for HO scale it's really all it takes Okay, just added some weeds and a couple crumpled up newspapers. I'll see if I can show it to you better. Put some weeds around the fire hydrant. Okay, I think that's about it. Um, I do have a couple lamp posts. Uh, maybe I'll add those later, but I would like to put maybe a lamp over here and a lamp here. And then on the other side of the street will be telephone poles. Okay, I wanna quick show you where it is sitting in place. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, everything that we use to build our city block is from Fosscale Models. So be sure to check out their website. It is FosscaleModels.com. Well, again, I am having so much fun 
working on this layout and sharing it with all of you. It's so exciting to wake up in the morning and get a cup of coffee and come down and run some trains and just stare at the layout. Um, I enjoy it so much. Well, thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy modeling everyone.